Okay, so we are talking, let me hope I get your name correct. Uh, Tetsuaki Ayagoa. Uh, Aoyagi. Oyaga. Yes. Aoyagi, okay. And, and you're with uh, Digital Stream Corporation. Yes, I'm working for Digital Stream. And Digital Stream Corporation basically was originally involved in inventing the mouse, correct? Yes, with Microsoft. Yeah. So our company is uh, 25 years old. And at first, the uh, starting point is uh, making a op op OPU for disk tester. Uh, disk tester means uh, when we making a DVD or CD CD discs, we our pick up testing the disk, with which the disk is good or not. I see. So if we our OPU cannot detect the disk, the disk is a no good disk. It means uh, it means that. Our OPU is a special quality right. for OPU. So we started uh, this OPU manufacture 25 years ago. And then making a optical development with Microsoft. For example, OPU mouse, optical mouse. Right. Well. So joystick, do you know the joystick? Sure, um, sure. And you did that too? Yes, I that, that using the optical technology with Microsoft. Okay, so, so let's flash forward uh, 25 years. Uh, who, what gave who the idea of designing an optical cartridge? Was that something that you... That Me. You? Me. you. Yes. Now, when you bring an idea like that to a, to a company like this, what do they think? You're crazy? <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, that's because uh, we want digital stream uh, identity is uh, we want to make uh, something new optical cartridge like a uh, joystick like optical cartridge so i want to make uh, something new in the market now are you a record fanatic yeah i'm 28 years old so at first time y I you're uh, you're not too old for records <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes so but i Three years ago, I heard the record first time. This is first time three years ago. But amazing for me. So, the special sound. I never heard uh, such a good song. Then I started to making an optical cartridge. That I like. Using the technology that you yes. knew. Yes. Yeah. So, we c our company is uh, only have an optical technology. So, I searching the technology of optical, analog and optical technology. So I watched the Toshiba and Ken Toriel was making an optical cartridge 40 years ago. 40, that's right, Toshiba made yes, one. Yes, yeah, yeah. right. So I bought 40 years ago optical cartridge and opened it. We can, we can make more and more better. With, with modern technology. Yes, yes, so, right. So in one sense, first you back-engineered the original mm -hmm. Toshiba cartridge. Yes. And then you went and set about building a better mm -hmm. version of it. Yeah. And so, um, can you explain it to uh, AnalogPlanet.com readers how this works exactly? Yes. Uh, Would this help to see it yeah, or no? It is not good. Not a good but you can see it. Yeah. So, optical cartridge is a very simple system. It has a LED and a backside photo detector, and a LED and photo detector, and tiny, tiny slit in, in it. Uh -huh. So this side is one millimeter, very tiny space. So how to detect the re analog record the uh, movement? movement. Yeah. So this is a what what we have what we doing we are doing so we are tiny tiny slit like this so analog record has a 45 degrees movement right. so if you moving like this so the tiny shadow moving here backside black 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 one is a photo detector um, if the yeah if the tiny slit movement darker and brighter, darker and brighter. Oh, I see. Shadow is moving like this. Right. So you can see this one is uh, more easy to understand. Our cartridge uh, system is very simple. This is infrared LED we use. Right. And backside photo detector. And uh, inside we have a tiny, tiny slit. A switch. Slit. Switch. 
uh, screen. A screen. Screen. Yeah. Screen. Okay. Yeah. Screen, yeah. Yes. To block the light and monitor. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Like, okay. Yeah. Uh, screen moving and uh, shadow moving, and the photo detector's uh, signal is changing. So important point is we don't uh, using a digital analog conversion or analog digital conversion. Right. No, no, nothing. Like nothing. That. Yeah. All analog information. Okay. Yes. And this is very low mass, obviously, for this. It's a very low mass. Yes, right. No mass. Yes. And so, uh, in designing this, uh, so you have to get a cantilever and a stylus. Yeah. So where did you supply that from? In Nami Geposit, it's made in Japan. Right. So Japan has a two major suppliers, Nami right. here and Oga Geposit. Right. We are asking Nami Geposit. Uh, of course, I don't know all of the where it's making. So I call directly to Nami Geposit right. and contact them. And I want to make a photo copy, so okay. they supplies with us. What's the stylus profile on that? DSW one. Oh, this, uh, is, it a, is it a micro ridge? Is it a... Uh, Shibata style? It's a Shibata yeah, style. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, it sounds fantastic. I can yes. tell you. It just doesn't... It sounds like nothing, which is mm -hmm. the best it could sound like. Yeah. And so, it's outputting a voltage. Yeah. Uh, uh, cartridge voltage or... Uh, yeah, yeah, cartridge voltage. 30 millivolts. 30, uh, 30 or 40 millivolts. Uh, ten times more than the than a moving coil. Yes. That's a lot. Yes, that's because we can. That means that we can more strangle than the yeah. noise yeah. in the arm cable. Sure. Yes. And then that goes into the box. Now, yes. what does the box do? Uh, box doing the two things. One thing, our cartridge must have a must need a power supply from the equalizer. Right. So one thing, one one job. So equalizer is a supply the LED power. And one more thing, and uh, making a rear car conversion to line output. Two jobs. Two jobs in What's the second job? Second job is a uh, rear conversion. Rear phono EQ. RAAA? RAAA, yeah. Okay, so this needs RAAA conversion? Yes. Okay. And uh, so, how do oh, amplify it amplifies the signal too, yes? When the equalizer does some amplification as well? It brings it up to line level, right? A little bit, yeah. Yeah. So, so it's, ready for, it's ready to be a line level input on a standard preamplifier. Line level output. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And that's about, I think, 0.75 volts? 0.5, uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And what does it weigh? What's the weight? On cartridge? Yeah. 6.5 grams. Okay. And, and what's, what, how, how highly compliant is it? Um, and we don't open the specification of the high uh, compliance, but uh, the alcohol coverage is very high compliance coverage. So it's, me it's meant for a, a high mass tone arm, medium mass tone arm, do you know? Uh, it means high, uh, we, will, we recommend it uh, high, comp high, high mass. High, high compliance co tone arm. High well, the tone arm wouldn't have a compliance, uh, so it would be mass. I don't know how to say it. Okay. So I, I think he's told me that the cartridge has roughly about a, a it's actually a compliance level about 12. So it's kind of a really low, 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 oh, good. low to medium. So, so low to medium, so that's perfect for the, a modern high mass yeah, arm. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Mass that's yeah. what I had to yeah. know. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's okay. My Japanese is worse because I don't have any. <laughs> um, so uh, what, is it, what is it selling for? It's $8,500 for the cartridge and the equalizer together. Okay. In today's world, that's for something that's as high performance as what I thought I heard in there. Um, that's reasonable. No, because that's the phono preamp's done. Yeah. You're getting everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Well, thank you very much. That <laughs> was welcome. really interesting, and I think right. our readers, are, our, our viewers, readers, whatever they are, <laughs> are going to really, really <laughs> enjoy listeners. this. They're yeah. listeners, and yeah. they'll be watching.